Hello everyone and welcome. So in this video I'm gonna show you how I created all these assets using Vellum in Odini. So let's start by looking at these earphones, which is really simple. So I'm starting by drawing three curves with the draw curve. Just draw one, two and three curves for the earphones. Then I'm resampling it and fusing the points with a high snap distance, but still they are three primitives and they will separate in Vellum when we simulate. So let's resample again and set to subdivision curves and now we can group those connecting points just by selecting the end and the start of each, uh, each curve. And this is our initial setup. Then with the Vellum here, we can increase the edge length scale. So it has enough separation between the wires. That way when we sweep it later, when we create geometry, it will have enough space to to create a believable, believable shape. Then we are stitching the points, those points that we saved, so the the wires don't don't disconnect. Then, if we run the simulation, as you can see, they are converging to the center. And that's because I'm using a pop attract with a high force scale. And that creates the effect we're after. So then just placing a time shift on the desired frame, in this case 200, and we get something like this. And you see, even that, that uh, edge length scale was a bit too big, but I'm gonna leave it like that. Then just cleaning the attributes and orienting the creating the tangent normals with the orient along curve. So we have normals along our curve. That way when we copy the other shapes, the earphones and the, the jack, it will be in the correct place. Then I'm just resampling it to subdivision curves, creating a connectivity. So we have each curve with a class. And then I can use that class to separate the where the headphone jack will be and where the earphones will be placed. Then in here I'm creating a P scale. I want the main wire to have a, a bigger scale, so I'm selecting the primitive zero and giving it a P scale of one. And the other ones, which is the default value, will be 0.8. Then I'm just sweeping and we will have a bigger wire and then two smaller ones. Then I'm just grouping it. And in here I'm copying two points to earphones, to earpieces or earphones. And in here I'm I'm connecting, copying to points, the, the headphone jack and we'll end up with something like this. And in the copy to points, I'm just selecting the target points in this case that we selected in here. Otherwise we'll be copied all over the place and the same for this part of the graph and the earphones. We have something like this. 
and the earphone piece it's really simple to do I'm creating a line bending it and then sweeping it with the apply scale along curve as you can see I have this sort of shape in here I can show you and I'm subdividing creating a connectivity and blasting so I'm subdividing, creating a connectivity based on the end caps and blasting the bottom one, then filling it since I don't want it rounded. Then also in the sweep node I extracted the, the end caps as you can see in here. And then I'm group expanding it so I can have that typical part in here beveling the bottom and coloring the end caps and I'm also creating an attribute to use in Solaris and Karma uh, end caps there you go and grouping it for the connector yeah, it's really simple just align with a few points and grouping every other point within a range so every other point within a range then i'm sweeping with apply along apply scale along curve again promoting the initial group to to edges beveling it saving the edge fillet polys group and then extruding it to create those details and beveling also And I'm doing the same in here, nothing new. And then just creating the, the attribute to use in Solaris, the fillets. So that's basically how I did the, the, the earphones. Now let's have a look how to create this sort of crumbled paper or in this case tissues as you can see I have three of them each one being a little bit different so this is actually pretty simple I create a planner patch I have this amount of subdivisions and size 3 by 3 then I'm creating a vellum cloth you can see the settings in here only thing I changed was reduce the stiffness of the bend and let's say for example we see the first one so this is how it's simulating it's crumbling to the to the to a position I defined and it will end up being more in the center so if we time shift it we get something like this and the way I'm doing that is by using a pop attract again with a, a scale a smaller scale and with the goal set to another position in this case one in x and one in z that's why it's moving towards that direction and then a pop force with the uh, amplitude of one to add a bit of noise to the whole simulation then just doing a post process and creating some thickness and we have something like this then for the other ones is the same but in this case I have a, a different position for the pop attract and probably a smaller force let's see if this calculates and there you go so position set to zero 
and for scale to one and uh, higher amplitude to create this this more distorted look so let's have a look so the frame is 68 so you can see how it's simulating how that pop axis force pop uh, force is creating this noise on the simulation so step out there frame 68 we get something like this if i remove the reverse normals you can see it's creating an interesting shape but i'm rambling too much so let's have a look at uh, the next setup but in here i'm just uh, placing the geometry in the center and then blasting each one or isolating each one so i can load them in solaris so for the tissues bag i'm starting with this geometry like you, you can see in here, it's really simple to create just uh, a box and then doing a boolean in here, set to shutter, extracting this shape and then recreating this part in here and also doing the UVs, that's what I'm doing in here. Then for the vellum, I'm creating a vellum cloth, set the rest length scale to 1.5 and then I'm stitching so vellum constraint set to stitch points this part in here so it doesn't break since they are separated meshes and I want them like that then I'm creating a vellum solver and for the collision before that for the collisions I have this shape in here and then I'm I'm picking to create to create the collision geometry and that's the geometry I'm using in there so vellum clot vellum stitch and then in the solver I have the ground plane in here and also the inner geometry for collisions and then I'm just solving in the first two three frames as you can see in here this is the final shape it's just three frames and one thing I wanted it was to keep this orientation or something close to it so for that I am using a pop wind to, to have some force acting in here. So as you can see, I'm using a pop wind set to 1.5 on the Z axis. If I remove that force, you can see that this will fall over, which I don't want. So I'm enabling that and then freezing at frame 3. So that's basically it. So for the candy wrap, it's not that complicated. I'm creating a planar patch. Then I'm bending the geometry. And I'm creating a few groups. So in this group expression, I am creating two groups where the geometry meets when I bend it, so I can stitch it. And I'm also creating two groups for where the, the it creates the, the twisting effect of the wrap. So, as collision geometry, I have the candy, which is a really simple modeling task and I, then I have two tubes that are rotating in opposite directions as you can see 
and that these three objects will act as colliders so I connect them to the colliders then create the vellum cloth really default set settings almost then I'm stitching those those top points as we saved before so left Z and right Z then I'm attaching the this tube to those points we created though that that point work we created and doing the same in this side and then just solve it I don't think I have nothing in here no I played with the rest plan but was not working properly and then just simulate and let it cook for a while and as you can see it will start to twist along with our collision geometry again I'm not sure if this is the best approach to create this this sort of object but it gave me a good enough result and I'm just adding some blur and subdivisions cleaning the attributes and give it, giving it a name to use in Solaris So then I am assembling everything in Solaris and creating the, the layout of the objects and the materials and everything but since this video is already too long I'm gonna leave that for another time and meanwhile you can download the full scene on Patreon and have a look how I set up the, the Solaris part and how I created the, all the materials. So that's all for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time, thank you.